Okay, so let us continue with our discussion of harmonic functions and the maximum principle. So, uh, so if you recall uh, we have this uh, uh, maximum principle uh, so so this is the real version so you have uh, u <coughs> uh, defined on capital u with values in r uh, u is a domain in the complex plane uh, and uh, uh, u is a real valued function Uh, and in fact you assume u uh, is a function which uh, uh, is actually harmonic okay u is harmonic on capital u okay and suppose uh, uh, u of z is less than or equal to m for all z in u then either uh, u is a constant u is constant on capital U or uh, the bound is uh, this inequality is strict or u of z strictly less than m for all z in u okay. So, in other words a harmonic function and which is a non constant harm which is non constant namely a non constant harmonic function uh, it can at never attain a maximum in the uh, in the uh, in an open set okay in an open connected set so uh, and of course the point about an open set is that every point is an interior point right a set is open in topology if every if and only if every point is an interior point. So, what you are saying is that a harmonic function cannot attain a maximum at an interior point and the, therefore you know if you can extend the harmonic function to the boundary uh, to a continuous function then you should expect the uh, maximum to be attained on the boundary okay. So, so let me state that also uh, uh, in other words so uh, if so if u extends continuously to the boundary of u uh, and capital U is bounded then uh, unless uh, then u attains its maximum on uh, the boundary okay. So, this is the re real version of the maximum principle. So, in fact the, the fact is that uh, uh, the condition that u is harmonic can be replaced by the condition th that the by the equivalent, equivalent condition that u is continuous and satisfies the mean value property has the mean value property at each point okay. So, uh, uh, in, uh, instead of assuming assuming u is harmonic in u is equivalent to assuming to assuming u is continuous in capital U and has 
the mean value property on u on capital u okay so this is something that uh, i told you is a, a is a theorem that uh, for a continuous function harmonicity on a domain is equivalent to it's having the mean value property at each point and i think uh, and we saw i gave you a proof in one direction namely if the function is if the function is harmonic then it has a mean value property uh, i used the cauchy integral formula to prove that last time and the harder part is to show that a continuous function which has a mean value property is harmonic okay that's the statement that i did not prove uh, and uh, i'm not going to uh, give the proof of that okay but i'm going to use that fact that harmonicity is harmonicity is uh, equivalent to uh, uh, continuity with uh, the mean value property okay so in other words i'm just trying to say that maximum principle applies to any continuous function which has the mean value property because this is the same as harmonic okay so what is the proof of this so the proof of this is pretty uh, pretty simple it of course uses a mean value property so you know so the idea is that you know uh, see so so you know you have uh, so if let, let 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 me draw a diagram so you have so here is the complex plane and you have some domain uh, you i have uh, well i am i am always drawing a bounded domain it need not be bounded uh and then there is a point uh, i take a point z not in the domain all right and well uh the fact is that uh, uh so what is given to me is that u is uh, u is real value small u is real valued and it's bounded all the values of small u on this open set u uh which is the interior of this amoeba like region that i've drawn uh that's where the function u is defined small u is defined so there's a function like this taking values in the real line and all all the values of small u are bounded above by m okay and uh what do i have to show i have to show that uh if u is not constant then uh u never attains the value m in the uh, in the in that open set in that in that open connected set it's a domain it's both open and connected as you will see the connectedness is very important it will be used in the proof so so uh, the uh, the other way of uh, proving that statement is trying to show that if u assumes a value capital m at a point inside i'll try to show that u is constant okay so which so the contrapositive of that will be that if u is not constant then it cannot as assume the value m at any point inside so at every point inside the values of u will always be strictly less than m which is the assertion of the statement of the uh, the assertion in the statement okay so uh, suppose so let me write this let us let's assume that z let z not belong to u with u small u at z not equal to capital m let's assume this okay and uh, 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 now you know the fact is that this, this small u is a harmonic function uh, but more importantly what i want is that it has the mean value property okay so a harmonic function is a continuous function which has the mean value property at every point this is a uh, this is an equivalence okay uh, by the way you you know that harmonic means that uh, uh, the original straight definition of a harmonic function is that it should satisfy laplace's equation it should have continuous uh, derivatives of orders up to 2 and it should be continuous okay uh and it should and and it should uh, satisfy laplace's equation but uh, let me again repeat it's an important fact that uh, a function which is harmonic has the mean value property and conversely a function which is continuous just continuous and has a mean value property is harmonic and the beautiful thing about harmonic functions is uh how are they related to complex analysis they are related in the sense that harmonic functions are always uh, uh on on small disk like neighborhoods namely some on on simply connected open sets harmonic functions are always real valued i mean uh, real parts of uh, analytic functions and uh, since analytic functions are infinitely differentiable it follows that the harmonic functions are infinitely differentiable okay and that's great because 
when you define uh, a harmonic function you only ex, uh, you only want the derivatives to occur up to uh, order 2 and they sh that they should be continuous but then it tur they turn out to be infinitely differentiable okay that is because of the fact that harmonic functions are locally real parts of analytic functions and analytic functions are infinitely differentiable okay. Um, of course what is more uh, uh, amazing is the statement that you assume uh, uh, nothing about uh, the derivative at all uh, if you assume the mean value property you are just assuming that the function is continuous and it has a mean value property which is you take the mean of all the values on a circle uh, sur surrounding a point sufficiently small circle surrounding a point then the, the, the mean value average value you get is the value at the at that point at the center of the circle and this holds for all sufficiently small circles that is the mean value property it is it is a property which is defined by an integral and uh, it only and for the integral to be defined you only need continuity. So you know if you have a function which is just continuous uh, and which has a mean value property the upshot is that it is harmonic and as a result it is infinitely differentiable so it is really amazing okay. So uh, anyway so uh, see at, at the point z0 uh, u will have the small u will have the mean value property so it means that you know if I take a small disk surrounding z0 uh, uh, inside your inside your domain uh, so you know uh, so I will have the following thing uh, u u has mean value property at z0 implies for all uh, so implies there exists an r0 greater than 0 with uh, uh, the val the, the average value or mean value of f uh, on mod z minus z0 equal to rho okay the average value on the circle is actually equal to the uh, uh, not f so it is u is equal to u at the center of the circle. So this is the this is the mean value property okay that and this is for all uh, rho greater than 0 uh, rho less than r0. So for sufficiently small circles centered at z0 the average value of the function on the circle uh, is equal to the value at the center that is the mean value property but and how is this defined this is defined as 1 by so it is defined by integral you integrate from 0 to 2 pi uh, the, the function values u of z0 plus rho e to the i theta that is how a point on this circle looks like uh, as theta varies from 0 to 2 pi you get the whole circle centered at z0 radius rho and then you integrate with respect to d theta by 2 pi this is the mean value and this is equal to uz0 okay uh, but of course you know uh, I have assumed that uz0 is m okay. So you know I can actually write this as integral 0 to 2 pi uz0 uh, minus u of z0 plus rho e to the i theta uh, the whole into d theta by 2 pi equal to 0 I can write it like this that is because you know u z0 is a constant if the first integral will just give me u z0 because if I integrate d theta over 2 pi from 0 to 2 pi I will simply get 1 okay. So uh, now what you must understand is that this is the integrand this integrand uh, 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 is uh, uh, you know this is always greater than or equal to 0 okay that is because u z0 is m u of z0 is m and all other u values are less than or equal to m that is already given to me okay. So the difference is always non-negative so I have a non-negative so you know I have this fact I, I have this situation where I have a I have a integral uh, of a uh, uh, I have an integral uh, of a real valued function on, an, on, a, on a closed interval okay which is non-negative and the integral is 0 okay but then that means the integrand has to be identically 0 okay this is something that you know. So, so this implies that u of z0 
has to be equal to u of z0 plus rho e to the i theta uh, for all rho with 0 less than rho less than r0 okay. And of course so, so what have I proved? I have proved the following thing, I have proved the following thing, I have proved that if u attains the value m this maximum value m at an interior point z0 then there is a whole disk surrounding z0 where u const is constantly equal to that value m okay. So, on this whole disk okay as I as I increase uh, as I allow uh, uh, and, and, and of course you know it is very important that uh, theta uh, of course is varying from 0 to 2 pi okay. So, if I fix a row and uh, let theta vary from 0 to 2 pi I will get the circle of radius rho and then if I make rho small then I will get the whole disc I will get I will get all points in the disc uh, 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 centered at z0 and radius r0 okay. So, what all this tells you is that so, so if uh, uh, u of z0 is m then there exists r0 greater than 0 such that u of z is m for all z with mod z minus z0 less than r0 this is what it this is what I, this is what we have proved okay. If u attains the value m at the point z0 then there is a whole disc centered at z0 contained in your domain with radius r0 okay where you attain you where u is equal to where u attains the same maximum m okay. So, what this tells you is that so this so, so I have basically I have used the mean value property at z0 I am applying the mean value property at the point where u has attained the maximum okay and I am using the fact that the integral of a non negative if if the integral of a non negative uh, uh, function is 0 okay then that non negative function has to be 0 itself okay. So, uh, so, so the moral of the story is what does this tell you this tells you this tells you the following thing the uh, if you take the set of all z in u capital U such that u of z is equal to m it tells you that this is open in u this is an open set because what have I proved whenever z0 is in this set I proved that there is a whole disc centered at z0 which is in this set. So, every every point of this set is an interior point of this set and that means that this set is open okay. On the other hand you also have uh, the, the set of all points of u where u is z is strictly less than m this is also open in u. Okay. This is also open why because you see why is that true because you see u of z the set of all points in u where u of z is strictly less than m is just u inverse of uh, minus infinity comma m okay. It is the inverse image of the the inter the this interval minus infinity m on the real line I mean this is precisely all those points uh, where u takes a value less strictly less than m and you see u is continuous function uh, u is a continuous function and this is a this is an open set and you know uh, one of the characterization of, of continuity is that the inverse image of an open set is open under a continuous map. So, therefore, uh, so, so this set is open but then what is the union of these two open sets? the union of these two open sets is all of u okay. So, you get u is equal to uh, the set of all points where small u attains the value capital M and disjoint union with the set of the other points where small u is strictly less than M because anyway it is given that all the values of u are less than or equal to M. So, 
the <coughs> those points where you take the value m uh, from one piece and those who take the value strictly less value strictly less than m from another piece and the union of these two is u but what have we just now seen we have seen this also open this also open these are two open sets okay and u is the union of two open sets but u is a domain capital u is a domain it's connected and a connected set cannot be written as a disjoint union of two open sets two proper open sets because any set that is written as a disjoint union of two non empty open sets is already disconnected writing a set as a union of two pieces which are disjoint from each other and which are open is already uh, disconnecting the set okay so so the connectedness of u will tell you that one of these has to be empty okay so but you know z not lies here so this set is non empty therefore this has to be empty so it will mean u is equal to this which means u is constant okay and that will be the end of the proof so uh, now u connected because it's a domain a domain is an open connected set implies uh, u is exactly the set of all uh, points where u small u is equal to m this other set is empty okay this implies that u is equal to m on u so that finishes the proof that if u attains the value m at an interior point then it has to be constant okay all right now there is one more statement the other statement is if u extends continuously to the boundary and uh, u is bounded okay then u attains its maximum on the boundary okay and what is the proof for that the proof is very simple uh, you know uh, if you take if if capital u is bounded okay uh, then its boundary is also bounded so if you take u union the boundary it's a bounded and closed set it's closed because you have added the boundary to it so it's compact any subset of euclidean space uh, which is both closed and bounded is compact so uh, that's why i'm using the boundedness of u okay the boundedness of u is also uh, going to give you the boundedness of dou u okay so it gives you the boundedness of u union dou u which is a closed set so which which therefore becomes compact and you know a continuous function on a compact set uh, uh is uniformly continuous and attains its bounds okay therefore u has to attain its maximum on u union do u but we have already proved that it will not attain its maximum in the interior unless it is constant therefore it has to attain its maximum only on the boundary and that is the proof for the second part of the statement okay so the second part of the statement just follows from the first part of the statement okay so uh so i'll just write that uh, down if u is bounded then so is then so is then so or do u and u union do u which is uh, and so uh, yeah so let me write that if u is bounded then so are do u and u union do u further u uh, u union do u is compact and u uh, necessarily attains attains its maximum on u union do u and and hence on to you because it see uh, it cannot attain a maximum in the interior the only case when it attains a maximum in the interior it is is when it is constant but if it is constant then its extension to the boundary will also be constant by continuity so it will attain that maximum that constant value the constant value will be also a maximum value it will be the maximum value and that will also be attained on the boundary okay so on the other hand if it is not constant uh, then 
certainly it cannot attain the maximum value in the interior so it will attain the value on the boundary all right fine so uh, so that finishes the real version of the uh, so i mean the point i wanted to remember is that a continuous function uh, uh, which has the mean value property on a domain uh, has has the maximum uh, principle a continuous function which has a mean value property on a domain satisfies the maximum principle that is what you must understand it cannot attain its maximum in the domain it has to attain the maximum only on the boundary provided you can extend it to the boundary okay and of course the boundary should be bounded right. So uh, alright so this is the this is the real version now let me go to the complex version. So, so here so the statement is the same except that instead of taking a real valued function you take a complex valued function okay. So, uh, uh, so f from u to c u inside c a domain and you assume f is harmonic on capital U and of course uh, saying that f is harmonic on u is equivalent to saying both the real and imaginary parts of f are uh, harmonic on capital u okay so a complex valued harmonic function is by definition uh, something for which both the real and imaginary parts which are real valued functions they are harmonic okay so uh, so i have the same statement only thing is that since it's complex valued uh, i have to write i cannot write u is I cannot write f is less than or equal to m because uh, uh, it is complex valued I have to use the modulus of f. So let me write that down if mod f of z is less than or equal to m on u then uh, on either f is constant on u or mod f z is strictly less than m for all z in u that is the maximum uh, the modulus of f will not attain its maximum in the interior okay and uh, uh, basically that means that uh, if you find a, if you take any point uh, with a certain uh, and take the modulus of the function at that point you can always find another point where the modulus of the function is bigger right when you say function does not attain its maximum it means that given its value at any point I can find another point where its value is bigger that is when uh, that is what it means to say a function does not attain its maximum okay. So it exceeds its function values at every point by function values at some other point suitable point okay. So, uh, so uh, if so let me write the other part uh, as in that case if uh, u is bounded and f extends continuously to the boundary then f uh, attains its maximum can mod f attains its maximum on the boundary okay. So this is the complex version so so what is the proof the proof is that we just use we apply the real version so uh, the proof is well. Uh, so again the proof is the same thing you, you assume that it uh, uh, there is a there is an interior point where uh, mod f attains the value m and show that uh, f is constant okay. So suppose z0 is a point of u with mod f z0 
is equal to m okay then i have to show that f is constant right so so this means f z not is e to the i alpha uh, m okay so see mod f f z not is equal to m and you assume that uh, 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 of course i am assuming that m is not zero okay uh, uh, yeah so i mean even if m is zero i could have taken alpha to be zero so uh, f of z not is a complex number with modulus m all right then i can write f of z not as e to the i alpha times m okay for uh, suitable alpha right of course if m is not zero then i can divide by m and i'll get f of z not by m has modulus 1 so it's a unimodular complex number so it is of the form e to the i alpha so i'll get fz by m uh, fz not by m is equal to e to the i alpha and well if fz not is zero then uh, i get i just take alpha equal to zero okay so in any case uh, this this equation holds for suitable alpha right now uh, of course if f if f mod fz not is zero it means fz not itself is zero okay fine so i i can write this now what i'm going to do is you look at look at e to the minus i alpha f of z look at this function okay now this function is just f of z multiplied by a constant e to the e to the minus i alpha is some constant it is a unimodular complex number it's a complex number of modulus 1 so you have multiplied a, a function by a constant and a harmonic function multiplied by a constant is again a harmonic function because after all if a function is harmonic if it's for example if it satisfies laplace's equation and multiplying a function that is harmonic by a constant uh, is going to keep it uh, if, if it is already harmonic it is going to give rise to again a harmonic function because <laughs> the differential operator uh, the constant will come out of the differential operator okay. So this is also the, this is also harmonic alright. So look at this which is also harmonic harmonic okay and if you look at uh, so in particular real part of that is also harmonic is harmonic because you know our definition of a complex function being harmonic is that both the real and imaginary parts should be harmonic so the real part of this is also harmonic okay now you see uh, if you if i look at the real part of e to the minus i alpha f z this is this is less than or equal to modulus of the real part of e to the minus i alpha f z okay because any real number is less than or equal to its modulus okay and this is certainly less than or equal to modulus of e to the minus i alpha f z because you know for any complex number the modulus of its real part is less than or equal to its modulus okay mod real part of w is less than or equal to mod w okay for any complex number w but this is the same as mod fz because modulus of e to the minus i alpha is 1 all right and mod fz is always less than or equal to m okay so what i have got is that i have got that this is a real valued harmonic function which is bounded by m and what is its value at z not at z not its value is exactly m okay real part of e to the minus i alpha f z not is actually real part of m which is equal to m okay so i have a harmonic function which uh, has values less than or equal to m and it has attained the value m at a at an interior point therefore by the previous case namely the real version of the maximum principle what i can conclude is that this real part of e to the minus i alpha f has to be constant okay so by the 
real version of the maximum principle real part of e to the minus i alpha f z is equal to m it has to be a constant okay. So, the real version of the maximum principle says that whenever you have a real valued harmonic function on a domain uh, if it is if it attains a maximum value in the interior it has to be a constant. So, uh, this this function the real part of e to the minus i alpha f z is a harmonic function on the domain capital U it is bounded by m all its values are bounded by m and it attains the value m at an at at a point z not inside the domain therefore it has to be constant. So, it has to be also that and that constant value has to be the same as the constant value at z not which is m. So, this function is exactly m okay. Now look at e to the minus i alpha f z this is actually real part of e to the minus i alpha f z plus i times imaginary part of e to the minus i alpha f z okay that is just expressing a complex number as the real part plus i times its imaginary part and and then but this is equal to m plus i times imaginary part of e to the minus i alpha f z okay. So, I, I have this but on the other hand what is the modulus of this? the modulus of e to the minus i alpha f z cannot exceed the, the modulus is the same as mod f z because mod of e to the i minus i alpha is actually 1 and that is less than or equal to m okay. What do these two equations tell you see I have a complex number whose real part is m and its modulus cannot exceed m the only way is that the imaginary part has to be 0. So, this will tell you that the imaginary part of e to the minus i alpha f z is 0 okay because the modulus is square root of m squared plus the square of this imaginary part and if and that can never be less than or equal to m unless uh, it can only be equal to m and in, in that case the imaginary part should vanish okay. Therefore, you get this and the mo moment the imaginary part is 0 the function is equal to its real part and that is equal to m. So, you will get e to the minus i alpha f z equal to m and this will tell you that f z is a constant it is just m e to the minus i alpha e to the i alpha. So, that completes the proof okay and again uh, as far as the latter statement is concerned uh, the proof again uses the fact that if capital U is bounded then the then the boundary of u del u that is also bounded and u union del u will become both bounded and close it will be compact and mod f uh, which will be a continuous function on this compact set uh, will attain its bounds and therefore, uh, uh, you know that uh, if f is not constant then mod f is always strictly does not attain its bound in the interior. So, it has to attain its bound on the boundary okay. So, that finishes the second part the second part uh, just follows as the real case okay. So, in particular what you must understand is that if you take an analytic function okay this is what you would have seen in a first course in complex analysis you take an analytic function analytic function also satisfies the maximum principle okay. Namely uh, if you take an analytic function which is all mind you an analytic function is also a harmonic function because the real and imaginary parts of an analytic function are harmonic okay. But the only extra condition is that the imaginary part is a harmonic conjugate of the real part that is what makes it analytic. If I simply take two real harmonic functions and write them as u plus i v that will not give me an analytic function unless the v is a harmonic conjugate of u okay. So, even for analytic functions the maximum principle applies and that is what you would have uh, seen in an earlier course in complex analysis. But what I want you to appreciate is the important fact that at the base of all this is the mean value property. I mean it is just if a function has the mean value property okay then uh, uh, if, if it is continuous and has the mean value property then it, it, it automatically has the maximum it satisfies the maximum principle. The maximum can only be attained on, a, on the boundary not in the interior okay. So, uh, 
So, now I need to come to the so called uh, uh, Schwartz lemma which which I need to use uh, later on. So, so here is the Schwartz lemma. So, what is this Schwartz lemma? So, you know Schwartz lemma is well so delta is the unit disc ok and you have uh, uh, and of course delta closure is uh, its closure the closed unit disc. And you are looking at uh, analytic functions defined on delta and taking values in delta closure ok. So, f from delta to delta closure uh, analytic ok. So, so that means you are what you are saying is uh, f is analytic in mod z less than 1 which means f is defined in delta on delta and it takes value in delta closure. So, mod f z is less than or equal to 1. I mean if you want to state this in words you will say let f be an analytic function on the unit disc with modulus less than or equal to 1 ok. You want to state it geometrically you are looking at an analytic function which is defined on the unit disc and taking values inside the closed unit disc ok. And let us also assume that 0 goes to 0 f of 0 is equal to 0 ok. So, assume this right. Then this Schwarz lemma is <coughs> is a lemma that com that compares the uh, uh, the modulus of f z and the modulus of z ok. So, so this the lemma is mod f z is always less than or equal to mod z for all mod z less than 1 ok. So, in some sense uh, uh, what it means is that uh, in terms of lengths it is a contraction, it is a contraction map in the sense that if I start with the uh, with the complex number z in the unit disc ok, it is length is mod z ok, but if I take its image f z its length will be will become smaller. So, which, which means that the mapping is kind of contractive ok, but it is not entirely that uh, only in terms of length it is contracting, but there is also a twist ok. So, so the, the question is uh, the, the other part of the Schwarz lemma is the case when when equality occurs. So, the other the, the next part of the Schwarz lemma tells that if you get equality even for a single uh, point in the unit disc then f is a rotation ok. <coughs> Further uh, mod f z naught is equal to mod z naught for an z naught with <coughs> mod z naught less than 1 if and only if f is a rotation that is f of z is equal to e power i alpha z ok. So, this is short slope. In other words any mapping from the unit disc uh, uh, taking values in the closed unit disc if it is not a rotation I mean you take an analytic map you take an analytic function defined on the unit disc and taking values in the closed unit disc and assume 0 goes to 0 map that preserves 0 preserves the origin ok. If uh, it is not a rotation 
then mod fz will always be strictly less than mod z it will be strictly contractive ok. The only case when it is not contractive is when it is a rotation and in and if it is a rotation then you know mod fz will be equal to z for all z because e mod of e to the i alpha will be 1. So, if equality occurs for a single z naught it will occur for all z with mod z less than 1. So, so let me write that. this is the short lemma ok and it is a powerful lemma which is used uh, except the proof is uh, rather simple because it uses the maximum principle, but it is a very powerful lemma and finds lo lot of use in uh, conformal mapping and uh, and many other situations. So, what you must understand is this in the case when f of z is a rotation it is a rotation about the origin then f becomes a one to one conformal uh, map namely it becomes a holomorphic isomorphism of the you know uh, unit disc onto itself ok and uh, uh, and in fact uh, you know uh, and, and in fact this is the these are the only uh, holomorphic isomorphisms of the unit disc onto itself. The only holomorphic automorphisms of the unit disc which preserve the origin are the rotations that is a that is a, that is like a uh, that seems like a converse, but actually it is also a corollary of the Schwarz lemma. So, so let me write that also let me write this corollary uh, any automorphism any holomorphic automorphism of the unit disc that fixes the origin. So, automorphism is a self isomorphism ok automorphism means self isomorphism it is an it is a holomorphic isomorphism from the unit disc back it back to itself and it should fix the origin ok is a rotation. So, this is the corollary of uh, this is the corollary of Schwarz's lemma ok the only conformal automorphisms of the unit disc are rotations those that fix the origin are rotations ok. So, we will look at a proof of this in the next lecture.